Towards the end of the 19th century, European sailors played a game among themselves and sometimes with the locals. This game called football spread like wildfire across the country. And today I can safely say it's a religion in Ghana. Football is not just what you see during the 90 minutes. A lot happens before the game and after the game. The beautiful game will go behind the scenes to bring these things to you. My name is Nanesi Edwa Santi Samuels, and this is The Beautiful Game. The Porcupine Warriors retained the title after a Prince Bafo goal against Amidao's professionals. This pushed them three points ahead of Chelsea, who lost their game against relegated threatened Pando Hearts of Lions. Statistics show goals flow this season compared to that of last season, with Mahatma Otu of Hearts leading the pack on 20 goals. For Tamil youth, Brekum Arsenal's and Real Tamale United, Relegation is staring them in the face. RTU got relegated by earning the lowest point ever in the Premier League. They went winless in 30 matches and finished bottom of the 16-team table. So these three teams get relegated to Division 1. And as they go down, three new teams also come up. Of these three new teams, two are not new to the elite division, Hazakes and Bechem United. We spoke to Fifi Anaman on their chances as they come into the elite division, as well as a review of the past season. Inter Allies seem to have a good side and they have very passionate management people. They have administrators who understand the game, administrators who are hungry for success. I think, you know, sometimes the little things that, that make a team vibrant, that makes a team resilient and, and, and a force to reckon with, to say. And Inter Allies have that, you know, they have players who want to make something for themselves. They have players who want to make a name for themselves. And their club is a very passionate outfit and I saw them after the game against Oko singing, you know, praying and stuff like that. They are very compact, passionate side so to speak. And, and, and I mean I was particularly impressed with the way their owners came to the game, you know, cheering them on, the happiness drawn on their face after the game. I think they know what's at stake. I mean they they know what they went through to come into the Premier League. I don't think they would just want to give it away like that. And, Mind, uh, mind you, um, there are certain teams in the league who are living dangerously, or, you know, and you wouldn't expect all the three teams coming in, Bechim, Hazakes and Inter Allies, to come in and come out. I mean, there's always that team that springs a surprise, and I think Inter Allies is going to be that side. I'm particularly happy for Hazard, not because I'm a fan of Hazard, I'm very far from, I'm not a fan of Hazard, but because um, other engagements um, um, pushed me to only watch most of Hearts of game cover, so to speak, at the Accra Sports Stadium. I, I, I covered them from the BA Stars game and they improved game by game, like literally. I mean, I remember um, David Duncan, when he took over, his first game was in Kumasi against Kotoko. And then he drew, people gave him, you know, people, people sang his praises, you know, he, he, he barely had time to train with the squad. And he went to Kumasi and actually, inspired his boys to put up a spirited performance. I mean, it was very impressive as a then. And then things started going wrong. From that game to the end of the first round, they played nine matches and only managed to win once, I think. And then they got um, 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 eight points out of a possible 27. And David Duncan's job obviously didn't look good. I mean, they considered a lot of goals. They couldn't score as much as they wanted to. And then all of a sudden, Things started changing. I mean, and, and it's very evident with the way they played. I mean, in the second round, they've been the best team. They played 15 matches, won 10 times, drew four, I think, and lost only one. They scored 26 goals. And mind you, Mahatma Otu got 13 of those goals, of those 26 goals. It just shows you the kind of belief that Duncan reintroduced into the House of Oak side, reintroduced the skipper and talisman Mahatma Otu, because you want to, to reawaken a side to his most inspirational player, his best player. And that's exactly what Duncan did. House of Folk, um, you and I know the slogan. You know it. <laughs> Until the bones are rotten, that's it. 
So, um, well, the first half didn't go well with us, but then uh, we kept fighting on and fighting on, and you, you saw it. We bounced back like that, and it was all wow. And that was it. We, 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 we actually um, would have done the best if we have had more games to play. And I know nobody in Ghana here would dispute that fact. You know, House of Folk, we're never going to say that until the bones are rotten. And that's it. That's for you. <laughs> we, we started very, uh, we started low. But if Duncan has made us proud by making the, the team coming back to what we're supposed to be. They would have wished that at least House of Folk would have played in the top four. But unfortunately, they couldn't make it. But I believe that House of Folk have done very, 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 very well in the second round. But then, this is football for you. Yeah, I think if I look at both teams, and in the beginning, Hearts of Oak started more uh, aggressive and uh, they showed more that they wanted to win in the beginning. And uh, in, that is why they scored also the two goals. Uh, Miriam gave them too much space in the middle. I think there is too much space and time to play for Hearts of Oak. After 20 minutes, uh, 25 minutes, I think uh, Miriam picked up and uh, created something but but it's still not enough to score Hearts had a mixed season by falling into the relegation zone in the first half and impressively recovering to end up fifth on the league table. They as well won the Presidential Cup with two goals against Midiema. It is going to be a consolation for players, technical team management, the board and the whole entire fraternity of Accra Hatsopoko. Of course, we always have to look ahead. The cup is one I do not think that I will even see the game before I get home tonight. So it's behind me, we still have to um, work seriously for the task that lies ahead. If it happens to be a match in coming Sunday, that is what we have to be working towards. It was, you know, pre-season, we have to be working towards that. You know? I mean, so we always look forward. You know? We always look up to our preparation and, you know, how we have to get ourselves going and next to you know, put the game that we just finished behind us. But seriously speaking, I it's just keep being you know, uh, remember that the cup is of an international dimension or international nature. So that's about how we, or that is my discipline and, and, and philosophy about, you know, preparation and all of that. The game is over and we always have to look at it. The next perhaps thing we have to be thinking about is how we get the players that we have targeted or the players that, you know, have appeared on our radar to look at me and you know, get started, see what you know, the next season goes for us. Um, come next season, we, we, um, as a fan, I'm expecting that we, we keep doing what we know to do best. And then um, 
I mean, bring the trophy home this time around. We don't want no Kotoko chasing us this time. We want to keep them behind and then live up to the spirit of the true Accra hearts of oak, never saying die until the cup is won. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> so we're looking at we're looking at the bright season. We're looking at making things happen. And now that management seem to be okay and the players are all doing their thing, the ticket tackle thing. Um, we would want to, to have victory at the end, yeah. We want about two, three players to beef up our team so that we may be able to win the league next season. The 2012-2013 Premier League season ended with Kumasi Asante Kotoko defending the cup. Looks like that's not the end for the club as they are aiming for the double by winning the FA Cup as well. Kotoko midfielder Michael Ekufu believes their hard work at the end paid off, though in the beginning things were not going right for the club. He hopes they add the FA Cup as the 23rd title for the club, as well as let their critics eat humble pie. But Midiema also has plans for this game as winning this will allow them to participate in Africa. We had a chat with former Chelsea coach on strength of Midiema team. Yeah, I think Midiema has to work very hard to prepare well in the, in the organization, in defensive midfield. When they lose ball possession, they have to fall back faster behind the ball that they play more compact and I think then everything will be much better. As well as rumors of him being their next coach. I cannot say that, but until now I didn't sign a contract. Because we didn't talk about uh, the details, about new players, or about a, a, a big change of play. I think an, uh, when a team wants to bring a coach, then they have to know the coach very well, what for kind of football he wants to bring. And, uh, but in general, you have to win, and that is, uh, that is football. You know, gone were the days when mothers did not want their kids to play football. It's like... If you wanted something to do in life, you were supposed to be a doctor, a lawyer, what have you. But today, everyone wants their own Pele or their own Asian. Due to this fact, lots of soccer academies are springing up all over the country. We went to Japan to see one of these academies. Try to dream aims at picking up gifted young footballers from very poor backgrounds in Ghana and West Africa to transform them into talented footballers with training but at the same time to give them very strong academic background so that they can later on go into further studies. Uh, so basically what we do here is uh, you wake up early 5.30 and then you do your morning devotion, which is around 5.35, and then we finish probably around 5.60, which is almost 6 o'clock. And then uh, the boys, the younger ones, go for training around 6.30. So after that, we the senior ones have education around 7.45. So by that time, if you are a senior and you want to do your personal training or you want to do your homework, then you can do it before it's time for school. And then when we go to the school side, we start prep around 7.45 and finish 8.30. And then we start the classes from 9 o'clock to around 2.30. And then we the senior guys who started school around 7.45 come back to the dormitory side and get ready for training. We start at 3.30. The thing is, if you join the academy, it's right to dream. 
what you think is the best for you is what you work towards. But at the same time, the staff here will not only allow you to choose on one part. I want to play football and leave education. They make sure that if you want to go to school, you still have your football. If you want to play football, you have your education. So we have been pushed. Even though it's like some of us want to dodge the school or dodge the football, but still the staff here are working really hard to make sure that we keep it balanced. Football is not a lifetime profession. You could get injured. By the time you reach age 35, you are written off. And the aim of the school is to prepare these boys so that even after football, they can have a profession of their own. We, we intend to let them go up to university so that they will have something else. I call it one leg is good, but two legs are better. One leg football, two legs football and academics. And it makes them safer for the future. All I wanted to do was play football, but then at the same time, I didn't know how to become the professional that I wanted to be. So all I wanted to do was just play football. And it was really difficult because my dad wasn't really paying that much attention to me in education. All he needed was just give me the money, go to school, but not really supporting me to check if I'm in school, if everything's all right, am I getting the great result in school? So I never really took education seriously, but at the same time, just playing football, playing football. But then I got lucky to join the Right to Dream Academy. We have, we're lucky in Ghana to have a, a system of local youth teams, the Colts system in Ghana. Uh, so we utilize our relationships with that and the pre-existing structure to uh, arrange tournaments in each town, major town in, in the country. And then uh, through those Colts teams, we invite them in, see them play, and then start filtering out the better players for further assessment. So we do about, about 60 to 70 events uh, each time we look in Ghana, um, which goes from Navarongo in the north to, uh, to Takaradi in the south. So it's a, it's a nationwide sweep, um, trying to identify the very best players that are available to us. Recruitment, we go to every corner of not only Ghana, but also other places in West Africa. We go through all the major towns, cities, uh, smaller towns as well to look for players. And we do large recruitment events. We scout thousands and thousands of players to find just one player. So it's very rigorous. It takes a lot of uh, our energy and our resources to complete. And to get a player into right to dream is a huge achievement for the boy, but it's also a huge achievement for the, the recruitment staff. Who, who search for the players as well. At the younger age groups, so 11, 12, there's a, there's a large amount of talent um, in Ghana and the surrounding countries. There's a, there's a great passion for the game and they're playing in the streets and um, they're, they're very good, good quality. As you start to go up the age groups, it becomes a bit more difficult for that talent to, to still remain competitive with the rest of the world. When you compare the elite programs and the quality of football development, players, elite players get across uh, the whole world in Brazil and in Europe, then it's a bit difficult for your average Ghanaian player to, to keep competitive with the best players across the world. But in general, there's a lot of very good players um, in the region. Uh, the building, the facilities, uh, the fields we have, the level of players we've got has continued to the education we have, our character, development program that we have now, it's continually evolved and it will continue to do so. I think uh, with the years that's gone by, we've been able to add the experience year in, year out. And I think that's what makes us uh, a special academy now because we know exactly the mistakes we've made in the past. We know the, the, the things that's working and works well for us. And we know we've invested in what we have here in the academy as well. There's a lot, of, a lot of obstacles that uh, stand in the way of a, a general, uh, generic um, African player making it. So you try and take those obstacles away, uh, which is the stability, lack of stability in their development. 
So when you take that away, you give them opportunities to develop their experience um, in Europe to try and understand the levels of professionalism needed to make it professionally. And then you work on their character and development and understanding. Then you break those boundaries down, those obstacles down, and then you can hopefully they'll push on to that next stage of development and next stage of quality. Since we started this academy almost 12 or 13 years ago, we realized that boys who have excelled, who have done well in their various areas, in fact, they did excel because, not because of talent or intelligence, but because of their, uh, their shared character. So when the boys get in, we try to help them understand that when you shape your mind well, when you identify um, certain things in you that will make you approach situations in a positive way, you are able to succeed in life. So um, uh, trying to help them develop positive mental um, um, attitude is, is, is very paramount for us. So that's why we, um, as part of our Kata development program, we, we did what was called the growth mindset, where kids are supposed to assess situations, and anytime they assess situations, they don't respond to situations in a, in a negative way, but they try to see whether they could use the positives in the situation to better themselves. So a uh, positive mindset, a uh, positive mind uh, for uh, each of our kids, I think, is it's very, very important. I have some schools overseas that have graciously um, offered places for our boys. And um, the boys we've been sending there have proved themselves to be worth the opportunities they are being given. So these schools continue to accept our boys over the years. And new ones are also coming up. You know, having seen the kind of work we are doing here, they are offering them places here, scholarships to study at universities and high schools in the U.S., etc. Yes. For me, since I joined the academy in 2007, there's this thing about right to dream that even if you move away from here, you still think about it. I think the family is the important. You move away and it's like, if you are here, you don't really think about them, but if you really move away here, everything you do about is thinking about your other colleagues, which I think is the most important. If all Ghanaians really feel that way, I think we can really progress. You know, there is something very interesting about football and academics. Very talented footballers are also very intelligent. So the system that just trains footballers and gives them nothing else. It's not good. It's robbing them of something. The very good footballers are very intelligent. And we are bringing this aspect of their life, of their, of their ability into, into being. So they are very, very excited about academic work. Yes, they are very excited. Something like about a big dream like move for me and then I'm very happy that I got that. That's what I've been um, hoping for. And then now like I've got like the opportunity to play even like um, around the world, like getting um, into like the Champions League team and then all that. So I think I'm very happy that I've been like part of the, this big team. So the I guess the main exports who have played for the Ghana national team are Razak Nuhu, who's playing on loan in, in Strong's good set, um, Mohamed Abu, who's on loan in uh, Real Velikana, and then Abdul Majid Waris, who's just uh, recently agreed a transfer to Spartak Moscow, who won the Swedish Premier League um, top goal scorer and best player last year. So those are the main ones, but we have a lot from the under 11s going up. We have a, an exciting um, conveyor belt of talent coming through, so we're pretty excited about that. I think I feel like really great, um, even though even when I was here I was scoring, but I think it's something very big achievement from um, winning the top scorer in Sweden. It's like a big history, so I think I'm very happy and then I achieved that. I think right to dream uh, has a passion for developing players. Uh, the staff are passionate about developing players. We, we take care on the players that we select here that they have the right materials to succeed in football or in education. I think the, uh, the steps that we, uh, we let the players take between joining the academy and then leaving is a lot in between. And it's not about just what we do in the academy here, it's about the experiences they receive out of the academy before they leave here. 
and graduate to whatever pathway they go on, which I think is big steps that we've taken as well. Uh, we, we, we want to do everything we can to nurture the individual and, and develop the individual to make him a success in life. So everything depends on me now. There's opportunity. The best thing I can say now is just to work for it. I can't really say maybe in the next two years or three years I can be like this. The opportunity is there, but in football anything can happen. So at the moment I'm only concentrating and focusing on how to get there, which is to play football. So yeah, at the moment that's the aim, which is 2014 I should be 18 and by that time, I think with my determination and with the support of Right to Dream, I can achieve that and getting the contract, so, yeah. I think um, there's nothing much I can say than that I'm trying to give back to the whole of, um, not only Right to Dream, but the whole of Ghana, I'm trying to be a, a role model for like everyone in Ghana. Um, I think that's the, only thing I, that's the only way I can give back properly. Uh, as you said, academies are springing up all over the place. And I think you see in the, the national team, especially in Ghana now, at the under-17 level, a lot of the players are coming from the academies. And I think uh, that's, that's a positive thing because they've been able to achieve uh, qualification to the African finals. Uh, and I think other countries are also on the same path because they've got a lot of successful academies that they've used at that level as well. In fact, I wish that all football academies will adopt this two-track approach. You know, because the, the kids are talented, they are prepared to work. Sometimes when you interview our footballers overseas, they can't even speak proper English. It shouldn't be so. So this is my message for the country. The football academies should encourage academic work. We look forward to when these young footballers blossom into the national assets we are yearning for. My name is Nanesiedu Asante Samuels. I'm out.